Hello everyone, welcome back. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. What I'm about to say is going to be a tale as old as time if you've been following this channel for years, and that is that I am moving. I do think this is going to be my last move for a very long time. I'll get into why and life updates and all that kind of stuff when I do an apartment tour before I leave. I don't want to have a long intro because I can sense this video is going to be very long because I'm going to be mentioning every single book that I own here. I will say this is going to be more of a bookshelf tour than a declutter because I declutter clutter my books about once a month and donate them like three or four books maybe a month so I do that so frequently that I don't think I'm gonna have that many here to donate but we'll see what we can get through this has three levels we're gonna go through each and you can't see the one above but I've cleared that out and it's on the floor next to me so let's go ahead and go through it first is our kind of cruelty I reviewed this recently and highly recommend it I'm going to donate this one even though I really loved it because if you've read this you'll understand understand why, but it's not the type of book that you would really ever reread. And I can't get into summaries of each book for obvious reasons. This video would be four hours long. Next is The Whisper Man by Alex North. I've heard really good things about how scary this is, about a serial killer who whispers to you through your window, I think, so I'm going to keep that. These are two that I also have not read that I've heard wonderful things about, and that is Exit West and Circe. And I forgot to mention, this bottom shelf is mainly books that I've read. The top one is mainly books that I have not. So most of these that we're about to go through are all my kind of TBR. Next is The Alienist by Caleb Carr. Again, similar to Our Kind of Cruelty, I really liked this, but I'm not a big rereader of books. And you'll notice a trend that I only keep books I've read if they were a 5 out of 5 star favorite of all time. If not, I donate it. I know I'm not donating anything in this next stack, and that is my PS4 games. We have Life is Strange, Outlast, Detroit, Until Dawn, and The Last of Us. Next we have Shadow and Bone, and I don't know, am I ever actually going to read this? I'm going to keep it, but let me know, do you think I would like this, and would you ever want to see a review? <laughs> this one is V.C. Andrews' Garden of Shadows, and it has one of those covers where it opens up and you've got the family there. I remember being little and just loving V.C. Andrews, so I think I picked this up in a thrift shop, and I love but I haven't read this one yet, and I can't really picture a time where I would sit down and really read this instead of something else, so I'll donate it. Then is The Anonymous Girl, and this is about a psychology study. It's a thriller. I think that I'm going to donate this one. Then is The Last the last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. His books are always really fun if I'm ever in the mood for a super fast-paced thriller, so I'm going to keep this. I'm trying to remember where I got this from. This is the Valancourt Book of Horror Stories. This one's really unique and not like anything else I own, so I'm definitely gonna keep that. Then is, okay, this is, is 120 Days of Saddam, and yes, that is a little tushy on the cover. I picked this out because originally when the Year of War book club started, link to it below, it was originally going to be me picking out the most disturbing books of all time and then we'd read them together. Now it's much morphed into more so reading um, popular horror and thriller novels and everyone votes on them. And I much prefer it that way to be clear. But I purchased this because this was originally going to be one of the books we were going to read. But I mean, I have no desire to read this, so I don't know what I was thinking. Then Anne of Green Gables, I'm going to keep that. A River in Darkness is the true story of a man escaping from North Korea. Definitely going to keep that. Oh, I don't know about this one. Next is Spinning Silver. Help me decide. Do you guys think I would enjoy this? I did like Uprooted, but it wasn't one of my favorite books of all time. So this is going to go on the maybe shelf. This is the sequel if you weren't aware. So let me know if you read this. Did you love it just as much as Uprooted? Was it not as good? Let me know because this is going to go in the maybe pile. This is another one that's going to go in the maybe pile, and that is Bringing Down the Duke by Evie Dunmore. This is historical fiction, fun romance, and not normally my jam, but I saw Reagan from Pursuit Project saying that this was just really fun in the time of everything going on to have something like Hearted, and she really loved it. So I think for those reasons, I'm going to keep it. The Followers by Rebecca Waite. This takes place in the English Moors, and a daughter's mother or a young woman's mother takes her away to go live in a cult and it sounds so creepy and thrilling. I've been meaning to read this one for so long. Please let me know would you guys be interested in this because I haven't heard anyone else talk about it. Then we have Goth and I've owned this one for so long and I keep 
picking it up and I, I'm gonna admit I have trouble getting into this. So I think I'm gonna pass this one along even though just based on the cover and the title and the author, it seems like something I'd really enjoy. I've just struggled to get into this so I'm gonna donate that. Then is Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut. It'd be nice if I read this but I just don't really see it happening anytime soon. So I'm gonna donate that. The First Bad Man by Miranda July. What is this about? I never can remember what this one is about. I think this is gonna be another one that goes in the maybe pile. I'm really not sure. You all know I love me some Karen Slaughter. This is Triptych and I have not read this one. I think it's either the start of a series or a standalone, but either way, this is one of her few books that's either the start of a series or a standalone that I haven't read yet, so I'm eager to read that. Then is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. As I mentioned in, I think it was my last video, I read recently The Death of Mrs. Westaway and really enjoyed that. So now that I know I like her writing in general, I'm really looking forward to this. Eventually one day I will finish the Magician series. This is I think the third and final book, someone correct me if I'm wrong. I adored that series and it's rare that I really get swept away in a fantasy series so I do need to read this eventually but I do forget completely more or less everything that's happened in the first two books. This is a book that I love the cover so much. It's Daughter of the Blood and I think I'm gonna keep it but if the next time I do a declutter I still have this, I need to donate it. Okay, we are on to the second shelf and out of my little knickknacks and non-books, the only thing I'm gonna be donating is this really beautiful notebook and my ideal self would be, oh my God, I can't even open it. It's gonna irritate me. Um, my ideal self would be writing in these beautiful pages but my true self probably would never do that so I'm gonna donate this. This is a Stephen King book that's very hefty that I'm very excited to read and that is Sleeping Beauties. Let me know, have you read this? Was it good? I heard a lot of talk about this book when it came out but I didn't actually see many reviews on booktube so let me know if you read it, did you like it? But I'm gonna keep that. One of my classic favorite nonfictions that is Quiet the Power of Introverts, obviously gonna keep that. Another nonfiction book that I started to read and stopped for whatever reason but that I really enjoyed was Three Women and this is about the sex lives of three different women that was chronicled, really interesting. This is a book that I'm sadly gonna donate. I was really excited for it, I've heard wonderful things but I've tried to pick this up a few times and can't get into it and that is My Brilliant Friend. Let me know, do you think I would enjoy this and is this a mistake? I'm donating this because I have so many, I have multiple really, really good close friends that I have similar taste in books to who absolutely love this series. So I hope they're not watching, but I'm going to donate that. Gotta keep this one of my favorites, House of Leaves. Here are three newer books that I'm going to be keeping because I just got them and I'm really excited and that is IQ84 by Hiroki Murakami. A new book by Dean Koontz, um, they very kindly sent this to me and that is Devoted. And this has, when I read the inside, almost a similar vibe to Intensity, which was one of my favorite books, of favorite horror novels of all time. And I haven't read a lot of Dean Koontz since, so this is a new release. I'm so excited. This I love so much. It was sent to me a long time ago, and I posted some pictures on Instagram because it's just absolutely beautiful. But it's the Illustrated Herbiary by Maya Toll, and it's beautiful. Oh my god. I could just sit and like leaf through this. I'm not even showing beautiful pictures, but I could just sit and leaf through this for so long. Oh, stunning. Have to keep this, The World's Most Haunted Places. Next is Star Talk by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Am I actually ever gonna sit down and read this? It's set up, it's made for kids, and it's set up with Q&A. My camera died and while it was recharging, I spent a good 10 minutes really enjoying flipping through this, so I think I'm gonna keep it. We have my Vampire, whoops, Vampire Princess Miyu series. Definitely gonna keep these. The Sabrina the Teenage Witch graphic novel, which is so much fun, much better than the show, which I think has become trash. Everybody Lies, which is my friend Sarah's favorite book, so definitely gonna keep that. The Secret History by Donna Tart. I really enjoyed, what was it called? The Goldfinch. So I definitely want to read this sometime. Have you seen the Goldfinch movie? I thought the trailer looked wonderful and then I heard the movie was terrible, so let me know how it was. Surfacing by Margaret Atwood. I've only ever read The Handmaid's Tale, but I loved it, so I always like to keep at least one book by her on my shelf that I need to read. Then is All Hallows Eve. I purchased this 
where was I? Not Salem. I was in Sleepy Hollow. I video where I went to Sleepy Hollow with friends. Obviously I had to get a book there. And this one is just so much fun. Look at those three witches just having an amazing time. Then is Maid by Stephanie Land. And because I used to be a maid, um, that was one of my first jobs. I like the idea of reading this. I just don't know if I see myself reading it anytime soon. So I'm gonna donate it. And if I get the urge, you know, a few years down the road to go ahead and pick it up, I can always check it out a library or these next ones I don't have a lot to say about except I want to read them and I haven't yet so I'm just gonna go through them quick. The Roundhouse, Miracle Creek, Gifts, and Little Secrets. The next part of the shelf just has board games and I'm not gonna be getting rid of any of these. It has, whoops, we've got this really cool 1970s board game called Creature Castle that I found in an antique shop. We've got Sailor Moon Monopoly. I hate Monopoly. It's maybe one of my least favorite games. Hopefully my parents aren't watching this video because they bought this for me, but I just love the way it looks. I love looking at all of the pieces. I even think, think it's fun to just like set this out on a table just to make, you know, the table look a little more interesting. Oh my God. <sighs> my favorite game to play with friends. I'm not a huge board game person, um, but one of my friends, Caitlin, introduced this to me and that's code names. I think this is so much fun. I don't personally like games where I need to spend two hours figuring out how to play them, but I also don't like games that are just based on straight up luck. So this one involves some thinking and strategy, but you can learn it pretty quick. So I think it's really fun, especially if you're drinking. I'll just angle it down a little bit and then you guys can just see. We have Bad Feminist by Roxanne Gay. I've been meaning to read this for so long, but it's just been sitting on my shelf. I really enjoyed Hunger by her. This is my issue. I love listening to her. I love reading articles written by her. I follow her on Twitter. I've read Hunger, as I said. I just don't know that I see myself sitting down and reading this whole thing anytime soon. So I'm gonna donate it. And if I ever wanna read it in the future, I always can. Obviously gotta keep this. You, duh. My Year of Rest and Relaxation. Definitely want to read that at some point. The Winter People is a really fun horror novel and it just holds a really special place in my heart. There's something really unique about it. So even though I've read it and it's not one of my top 10 favorite books of all time, I'm still gonna keep it. I just really adore it if you want something kind of creepy where you're snowed in and just, just a really unique weird horror novel. Okay, this one is when I purchased mainly because of the cover and that is Euphoria, Euphoria by Lily King. And this is inspired by the events in the life of revol revolutionary anthropologist Margaret Mead. Am I ever gonna actually read this though? That's the question. I'm gonna pause the video, read the first few pages and see if I like it. I like it so far, I'm gonna keep it. One of my favorites of all time, Dark Places by Gillian Flynn, keeping that of course. Oh my God. <laughs> This is, it frustrates, well, it doesn't frustrate me. This is one of my most viewed videos of all time on my channel, which the only reason it frustrates me is if I ever on the off chance I'm talking to someone and mention that I do this. Not that I hide it from people, but it's not the type of thing that comes up in conversation. If they were to search chapter stacks in YouTube, you know what the one of the first videos that's gonna come up is? It's gonna be my rant review of come for Bigfoot. But a friend gave this to me as a joke and I think it's funny, so I'm gonna keep it. We need to talk about Kevin. This is a tricky one. Hmm. I read this and really liked it, but there's also zero chance of me ever rereading it. But I also just love her writing style that I could see myself just opening this. Or do, no, is that a lie? Do I actually see myself opening this and just flipping through it for fun? No, probably not, so I'll donate it. This is one of my favorite horror novels of all time. Super disturbing, I never hear people talk about it, and that is The Devil of Nanking. One of my favorites by Micah McDowell, one of my favorite authors, Cold Moon Over Babylon, if you want a fun gothic read. Hmm, this one is Pen Pal by Dathan, I don't know how to say that last name. This is one of the first year four book club picks. And this isn't one of my favorites of all time, but for some reason it just holds a special place in my heart. Every chapter ends on like a cliffhanger. I think this was originally on Reddit or was like a creepypasta or both. I'm not sure how that works. So I'm gonna keep this. This is gonna be a lot of keeps because these are books that I've read and really liked. And if I haven't donated them yet. I'm probably not going to because it means they're favorites, but Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides. Hmm. In the Miso Soup, I liked this one. This takes place in Tokyo and has, but I don't know if I want to keep it. The Stranger by Albert Camus, one of my favorite classics. Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. Love this old edition I found, and I loved, loved, loved this book so much more so than I was even anticipating I would. Okay, let me know because these are two that I haven't read, and I don't know that I, if I see myself ever reading them, but I, 
envisioned my ideal self doing a video like Battle of the Y thrillers and whether or not these two were good and which one was better because I heard people talking about them a lot. But I also just don't know if there's ever a time period where I would ever sit down and read both of these. <laughs> but that is, there's someone inside your house and one of us is lying. So let me know. These I'm going to put in my maybe pile. Do you want to see reviews on these? Have you read them and are they good? Would I like them? Let me know. Then is The Child Finder by Renee Denfeld. Do I have her other book here? It must be in my high school bedroom, which let me know if when I move home in between my moves, if you want to see a tour of my high school bedroom bookshelf, because that might be fun to go through, but it must be there. But one of my favorite books of all time is The Enchanted. And I really liked The Child Finder, but I also don't know that I ever see myself rereading it. So I think I'm gonna donate this one. Next is Deathless by Catherine M. Valente. So beautifully written. This is Russian folklore, very strange. And I think I'm gonna keep it. This brings back a lot of like the first or second year I started book two, but I really raved about this book. Gotta keep Harry Potter in Spanish. American Psycho, I'll definitely be reading at some point. Then is Perfect Days. And I've heard that this is, if you enjoyed You by Carolyn Kepnes, this is really good, so I'm gonna keep that. Swamplandia, please let me know if anyone's read this. This, I think, takes place in Florida and it's like, and you have a young female, female protagonist and her and her brother Kiwi defect to a rival park called the World of Darkness and it takes place in the Florida Everglades. I think it sounds weird and fun. Let me know if you've read this. My friend gifted, my friend Sam gifted this to me and that's on such a full C and she really enjoyed this and thought I'd like it so I'm gonna keep that. I've gotta keep this next one. My friend RG's Devilship, she gifted this to me and it is Haunted Castles, The Complete Gothic Stories and I'm so excited about that. Then is Play As It Lays by Joan Didion just because I watched a documentary about her recently and I thought I should finally just read at least one book by her to see what I think. And we've got our last three books here because the other ones sitting here are more large kind of picture books and I know I'm keeping all of those. We have Seven Gothic Tales by Isaac Dennison and my ideal self, and I know I keep talking about my ideal self and you guys might be wondering what even is that. I watched a video from, who was it? Allison, I forget her full channel name. If you watched her back when she's called Amarix back in the OG days of beauty gurus, you'll know who she is, but she talks about a lot about her ideal self and she's a huge minimalist. I'm not, but I like to watch her videos sometimes to just motivate me. And she always says when she, especially for clothing, is this something that only her ideal self in one specific random scenario, dream scenario would wear? If that's the only scenario you would wear it, donate it. <laughs> and so my ideal self would be reading the, this sort of, these classic horror novel short stories, but this is gonna be another one I'm gonna pause quick, read a little bit and see what I think. And I like it, so I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> this last shelf, whoops. And then these last two I know I'm keeping because I am really excited to read them and that is Fly Away and Desperate Characters. Okay, so in the end, I'm gonna be donating 15 books, which I know is not a ton, it's not a massive declutter, but just since I have decluttered books, pretty recently and fairly often. I'm pretty happy with that. That's at least one small box that myself or the movers don't have to move. And for also anyone wondering why am I moving in the middle of a pandemic, it's not my choice. I mean, I guess I could have chosen to not leave my current company, but my lease here ends May 31st. My new job is not located here. It's on the East Coast. I'm in the Midwest, so it's not the ideal time, but I'm gonna try and do it in the safest way possible. I think there's only gonna be one night where I have to spend it at a hotel, so if you guys especially have advice for situations like that in the pandemic, aside from sanitizing everything, let me know, even though I'm sure the hotels are doing a really good job of doing that themselves. Anyway, I could just keep talking about this forever. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you're doing well and staying safe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.